the spaceship, uh, the UFO start spaceship, uh, today about uh, NFT entropy, uh, entropy and expanding universe. And um, yes, together here with uh, uh, ERA and uh, RED. So um, before diving into everything, uh, guys, uh, let's share where are you transmitting from into the spaceship where, you, where we are located. I am in Portugal, the Algarve, small town called Lagos. Very beautiful place uh, in the list of most beautiful beaches. It's number seven, so in the world. So your personal list or uh, no, 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 no. The global list of uh, uh, accredited most beautiful places. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, from the what was this big book? Everybody used. And we lost the red, but I'm sure he'll. Uh, He'll be back uh, in, in yeah, the spaceship, yeah. I hope. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Here he is. I was, I was gone. I just yeah. got a new pop-up if I wanted to join. Yeah, Scotty beamed you out for, for a second okay. and, well, and got you back on. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, from, uh, from my side, I'm, uh, as always, from Berlin, uh, transmitting from the... the yeah, from the UFO uh, home quarters. <laughs> it's really nice. Yeah, as for me, I'm Era. Hi, first of all, and second of all, I am actually from Istanbul, uh, living in Berlin, but right now in Istanbul. So I'm in space trip from Turkey, Istanbul. <laughs> Great, fantastic. So, uh, Red, we didn't we didn't prepare you for this one, but how we usually start uh, each one of our uh, each one of our talks is asking like uh, our guests to share a fun fact or a strange fact or um, right. a noticeable weird fact uh, about themselves. So um, is there anything that you would like to share? Uh, what should our listeners or should our listeners not know about you? Uh, not know, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well the, the most particular thing I think uh, from me is that I, uh, did some parts of my compulsory military service on board of submarines. And I was asked even this morning the maximum depth that a submarine could dive. And um, officially I cannot say that, but I have read in an article in a Dutch magazine that it is 250 meters. And I can tell you that's not correct. Um, oh, and I've okay. and I've been 250. I, I've been, it's called D, the maximum depth. Uh, uh, so everybody talks about D, and I mm. I have been on D plus 12. So I've been even deeper than the maximum depth mm. that the ship could do. So well, it's a, that's that's not a, a common fact of somebody that no. he, uh, has been on, that's an on a submarine. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Thank you for uh, thank you for sharing. Um, well, I guess uh, with uh, with that being said, I guess we can uh, we can kick off uh, our crowdcast about uh, NFTs and um, yes, yeah, maybe Era, take it away or or Era uh, to be good hosts. We should share uh, like a strange fact or like a, a, a fun fact too about ourselves. Um, and uh, I will go first. Uh, so we have a little time to think. Okay. Um, so fun fact about myself and fun, pardon the pun, is uh, I have been uh, doing a couple of gigs of stand-up comedy, uh, actually, before before COVID uh, started. Okay. And, uh, and uh, did the whole and kind of killed it. But uh, yes, that would be mine. And the uh, weird effect, my, the, let's say, task was to make it really, really weird, uh, the topic, and uh, make it more funny than weird. So that was kind of the, the challenge. Two times it worked, one time it didn't. Okay. I was bombing okay. for five minutes. Oh, wow. That's, that's really nice. Um, a fun fact about me, it could be, we can say, when I traveled to one time in Marrakesh, I wanted to go to the desert and see the stars, but I sucked nowhere, middle of nowhere that I did not know. 
but somehow ended up in a very beautiful, authentic hotel somehow, and so the stars, everything from there. That was not my plan at all, but I survived, so I don't know if it's a fun fact about me, but it was really scary, but now funny moment of my life. <laughs> Nowhere that I did not know the language about and everything, but yes, it's just come on top of my head, I could say that. Cool. Cool. Uh, thanks for sharing. Then uh, basically we're ready to kick it off. Um, yes, definitely. So, first of all, welcome to War. Welcome to everyone, to our guests, to our listeners, to us also. And our crowdcast is going to last about 45 minutes. So, in the middle, there's Mario from Move for Start and me. I'm talking era right now. And, of course, our guest, Fred Aldred today with us, CEO and co-founder EOS Amsterdam, as well as Zaisan, but previously known as the Europe chain. And um, so, like I said, to so welcome to our viewers. And if you have any questions, guys, for you listeners, please use the chat. We will go over that after our crowdcast. Of course, stay tuned. Follow us from the link below. It's going to lead us to our Crackhouse uh, page, I'm sorry, and uh, yes, for the all updates. Okay, great. Maybe uh, for a uh, little introduction from uh, your side, uh, Red would be great so our listeners have a kind of a, a picture, um, yeah, what, what, uh, ex what brought you here and what's uh, exciting you right now. Yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a, a classic... Uh, tech entrepreneur, I would say. Um, I studied computer science. I studied business very long time ago. Uh, I started a couple of companies, um, sold one, and sold the second one uh, last week. Uh, my biggest company and my first, my first love, I would say, my first company uh, called Kahuna Managing Security. Uh, that was a cybersecurity outsourcing company. I wasn't uh, uh, involved with that company anymore day to day because three years ago I bumped into the EOS uh, cryptocurrency and I was very enthusiastic because I thought that um, building a very scalable blockchain would be something that uh, could solve cybersecurity problems. So. I wanted to be involved. The easiest way to get involved was starting a block producer. So we became a block producer for uh, the EOS mainnet. Later on, there were more chains uh, launched. So we started producing for more blockchains. Mm -hmm. And I took the initiative to launch the Europe chain, um, a GDPR compliant or a fully regulatory compliant blockchain uh, only executed with European block producers so that we can fully say that we are compliant to the European regulations. And we are in the process of launching a chain for India, Satya chain. And same model um, focused on that geographical legal uh, ecosystem uh, using uh, block producers from the ecosystem, but also block producers from just normal system integrators and more normal telcos. And uh, that was also the reason why we changed the name to Zizan, because Zizan now is the company that is initiating uh, these geographical blockchains. And we are launching some uh, other projects as well. So we can talk about that today. And mm -hmm. we started to do a lot of NFT work as well so that is yes. basically today's topic yes thank you very much for uh, the introduction we know like what your way was into blockchain now uh, but the specific do you remember the specific moment when you first heard about blockchain and and then or maybe if not the moment when you decided to okay to go into it you know that's like the, okay this is something well, I looked into blockchain, um, but the really the aha moment, because, and you still see that if you talk to, for example, cybersecurity experts, there's not a lot that are very enthusiastic about blockchain. And that is basically very strange because I think blockchain can really solve 
some of the key problems of the of the IT industry, uh, basically the same problems that the cybersecurity specialists want to solve. Um, but I think what happened is that many of them looked at blockchain, bumped into proof of work, uh, bumped into Bitcoin, bumped into Ethereum, and uh, realized this doesn't scale. Uh, so we, can, we can't do nothing with 35 transactions yeah. per second or eight transactions per second. And so my aha relatedness when I really thought this could be something, that was when I started to understand uh, EOS and the EOS IO software aiming to build uh, a blockchain that does 10,000 transactions per second. Um, so yeah, that was really the moment that I thought, yeah, this could work. We could really build on top of, like create the internet of value, uh, create the internet of transactions. And of course, Bitcoin Lightning Network is also a strategy um, and there's multiple strategies, um, but I, I really was impressed with uh, the strategy of, um, of the EOS ecosystem also to, be, to do everything compliant. There's a lot of, uh, for example, Bitcoin and Ethereum are not GDPR compliant. Um, they can't be switched off, but well, the, the, the concept, the technology is not uh, GDPR compli compliant. So mm -hmm. many enterprises can't use it. All right. Um, so, um, yeah, we wanted to actually ask also what fascinates you uh, about like EOS? What made you decide to go all in to EOS <laughs> and run the Amsterdam chapter? Because I think it's really interesting. Can you please share this with us? Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I was very enthusiastic about the scalability, the focus on compliance, the focus on usability. Um, of course, uh, maybe some of the listeners know that EOS as a cryptocurrency raised $4 billion. It was the most successful ICO, initial coin offering um, ever. Uh, it lasted for a year and the company that issued that block one uh, promised a lot, didn't deliver yet, unfortunately. Uh, they still are working on uh, a lot of projects, but that was, uh, yeah, it, we're now three years later. Um, and the ecosystem is a little bit impatient, getting impatiently. And, uh, but I think I expect after the summer that uh, two of the main projects will be, will be launched. Um, they of course bumped into a lot of, uh, regulatory issues and had to deal with an SEC uh, complaint. And yeah, there's a, it's a difficult space to navigate this uh, crypto space. So, uh, but it's very interesting to see what they, uh, what they have mm. done. Yeah, and that, that uh, it's a little bit also follow the money. I mean, is there, if there's $4 billion uh, in an ecosystem, of course you, you can understand that there's there's things to do that attract attention, attract people mm. uh, to build on top of. So yeah, that's that I enjoy. Okay, um, as um, uh, as I, I understand that the, the Chinese uh, ecosystem was quite uh, important for for EOS. Um, what does the what does the recent uh, crackdown? Um, what implications does it have for for the using ecosystem? Um, yeah, not not so much. The the crackdown of uh, Bitcoin miners is basically a very different ecosystem. Uh, that's really the, the the crypto mining industry. Um, the block producers, mm -hmm. uh, many of them, uh, come out of the uh, really more the blockchain world. Uh, mm. Dan, Dan Larimer was uh, the inventor of BitShares, the inventor of Steam. Building those two projects, he realized that uh, it's very difficult to launch a blockchain project. Uh, that is, I think, why you, why there uh, has been so many ICOs, ICOs that failed. Um, 
I, in my life, I bumped into one cryptographer in my life. How many do you know? <laughs> Not many, right? No. I, mean, so I have actually, I, I had one of my ex students, if it's like just very specific, uh, one of my ex students at university, technical university here. I referred to uh, to Lisk and became a cryptographer at uh, at Lisk actually, but yeah, that's yeah. I think the only one also. Yeah, yeah. So I know one, and so there's all kinds of projects that want to build on top of something very complex cryptography. Then you need software developers that understand cryptography, so that doesn't work. So building a, a, a blockchain platform where others can build on top of and take away all the complexities right. of, of cryptography and just make it very usable. Let me, can, let me share my screen uh, very quickly. For example, here, let me do it full screen. This, yes, is, uh, one of, this is one of the block explorers. One of the things that we have in the EOS ecosystem is account names. So very free, very user friendly. This is the account of EOS Amsterdam. Um, underneath we have some keys. These keys you have an owner key and an active key, um, and there you have the key pair. Um, if you do anything, you use your active key. Um, the owner key you put in a safe for safekeeping. It's like your seed file. And underneath is a very flexible system where you can program um, public and private keys connected to a, a smart contract. So um, we have created a claim key that's connected to the claim rewards smart contract here. And mm. um, that can only do one job, only claim our daily rewards, uh, the daily rewards we get as a, as a block producer. But this key is installed on a node. If that node is being hacked, um, that person can't do anything with the key because it can only mm -hmm. run this smart contract. Um, and we could just then generate a new one and reinstall it, and, and nothing is 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 uh, uh, gone wrong. So, so from that, a security perspective, uh, yeah, that it's, it really uh, has the ca capability for a very flexible account permission system. So on top of this, you can, and we've we've encountered uh, multi-signature projects in Ethereum where only generating one new key pair was seven hundred euros in in gas fees. So. Mm -hmm. This this is a, a very flexible system, account name, permission system, um, the ability to ge generate new uh, names underneath it, a very flexible. Um, you have a whole token system already built into the architecture. I saw an announcement that uh, Cardano was uh, launching a token structure. Uh, this is already here for for three years. So mm. yeah, EOS has really some some very powerful features. Um, very easy to use. Very easy to use for developers to mm. build interesting applications. Great. Okay. Thank you for for sharing. Would you say there's any down downside to to this, or or for for who is it fitting? Who is it? Who is it not fitting? Fitting for maybe? Um. Well, there's there's a need for some additional privacy functions within the ecosystem. So we're working on that. Um, now, the, the biggest biggest uh, challenge with the EOS ecosystem is, is the FUD, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, the, 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 the tribalism in the, in the crypto space, in the blockchain space, that people talk negatively about other projects mm -hmm. and um, that can be extremely passionate and, 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 and that blocks basically uh, the growth of the whole ecosystem. And um, yeah, but, but basically everything that people are working on building in the Ethereum 2.0 world is already live for three years. So yeah, just have a look at it because it's definitely much a very powerful ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Okay, of thanks. Course. And there I a little bit wonder, uh, Actually, what did you think when the NFTs, um, 
when you first, let's say, or like if the NFT ecosystem emerged, what were your thoughts in general? And like, how how did it <coughs> pop in your head? You know, like, is there a new use case? Or what was the first reaction of yourself? when, of course, there's an NFT ecosystem. Yeah, no, the, the uh, one of the, let me share my screen again. It's, uh, I think it's easy to, to demonstrate some things. So the whole idea here uh, in the EOS ecosystem is that we need a we need a world with millions of transactions per second. So uh, there's multiple mainnets, multiple test nets that are launching all kinds of projects. So EOS and Telos, you could call uh, more general purpose uh, blockchains. Uh, Proton um, is launching all kinds of very interesting financial applications on EOS IO ecosystem. And WAX was the first blockchain 100% um, focused on NFTs. And here you also see the Europe chain, but let's go to the WAX blockchain. You can see that um, we as EOS Amsterdam are one of the leading block producers. We're number six in the top 21 that is producing this chain. And one of the um, popular uh, marketplaces here is a marketplace called Atomic Hub. And one of our clients is called R2. And R2 uh, has launched uh, a sub marketplace. It's, it's like a shop in shop concept. So the, the general marketplace is Atomic Hub. Uh, why? He's a bit slow with some of the screens. Oh, never mind. Yeah, here, here we have uh, 1.4 million NFTs created. Yeah. And in the overall, um, in the overall WAX ecosystem are 38 million NFTs created and 70. This has been exploding, right? Uh, so this really, time, really, really, time span, you know, yeah, so where was this? This, so there's now 2.6 million accounts and yesterday it was 2.5. Um, wow, okay. And I still remember that it was half a million. That was maybe three months ago. Wow. Now it really exploded. Yeah, it exploded when um, some very popular uh, brands were announced, uh, like Tops. Tops uh, has licenses with Disney and uh, other brands, and they started to do Major League B Baseball. They did started to do Garbage Pail Kids. Mm. Not many people know Garbage Pail Kids, but it's very popular uh, with collectors. Mm. And um, this company, R2, which is our client, they these guys were very inspired uh, by this GPK uh, uh, collection. And um, they wanted to launch their own NFTs, and we supported them with that. Um, so they launched one, Luna Park, Graffiti Kings, Mutant Rockers, Car Toms, Monsters of Rap and Mutant Warriors. So six collections. The idea here is that you buy packs. Um, the sale is ended and, and um, this one was sold out um, almost pretty quickly within a day. And then you can unbox the packs and then you have your collection book. So what is an NFT? An NFT is a digital image you can uniquely buy and sell. Um, almost anything is uh, unique. An email, an email you receive is unique. Well, the text is unique. The send, the receiver is unique. Uh, but the word NFT is typically reserved for anything digital, unique that you could consider valuable and you want to trade with others. So it can be a one-off thing, an art piece, or it can be like this one. Oh, sorry, I don't have, this is the, my collection mm -hmm. book. 
the black and white ones I don't have. The color ones, mm -hmm. colored ones, I purchased. So I can I can see in my collection book which one I have, which ones mm -hmm. I, I don't have, and I can um, go to the marketplace to buy the NFTs that I don't have. So in the Luna Park series, the latest one that was uh, released, I can show you as an example. This let's say I want to buy this one. Mm. I click on buy and I buy for 13 cents dollar or one wax. Mm -hmm. I buy this uh, picture. There's 12,000 the same the same ones. That's why it's not very rare and it's only 13 cents. And I buy number 6,724. Mm. Close. Now I've no, bought it. No, it's near gallery, on your in your book. Now it's in my in my in, in my collection. Uh, for anybody that did any anything with Ethereum or other blockchains, uh, this was uh, done with the uh, the EOSAO Wax blockchain. It has a, a a block time of half a second, so it really feels like you do a. No, it feels mm -hmm. almost like a pin transaction. If you, you buy something in the shop, let me show you once again. You click on mm -hmm. buy. He opens a, the, the Wax Cloud wallet. That's and, it. It's in your collection. And it's in my collection. So it's the same th same way that I purchase something on a, in a shop. Yeah, it's very, seems that's very, very easy as, as people very are easy. used to. That's from the, let's say, uh, collectors. Uh, side of life. How does it, how does it work from the uh, from the artist uh, and creator side? Yeah. So w this is uh, collections. So uh, there's artists that draw these pictures, and they are in partnership with the R2 label. So the artist that we the artists that we work with. They um, they make this uh, these drawings and are uh, they have a revenue share model uh, with us with the R two uh, team mm -hmm. and so the artist gets to pay gets paid twenty five percent R two is doing all the promotion and all the tech work uh, all the work gets fifty and we do all the tech work um, these are collections so the aim of these collections is to 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 buy all the collections and all the, the items. These are um, a little 18 plus pictures of a mm. uh, Dutch Moroccan artist that um, um, has launched some, some particular pictures. I don't like it so much, but well, there's people that love it. And- uh, mm -hmm. Art is something to, you know, <laughs> to discuss about, right? Yeah, and this this is this is very nice. This is a um, an English uh, painter, and he paints incredibly realistic uh, pictures or paintings, and he takes a picture of them, and these pictures are sold. Here is a, a seven seven pictures of seven versions of one picture. It's a little bit long to to load. I don't know how. That's drawn. Oh wow! This is painted. It's incredibly. It's, uh -huh. uh, it's a painting. It's a picture, a, a photo of a painting. So this guy really, really, really makes incredibly detailed. And, yeah, he's and, got the light effect. Uh, the light effects are amazing on this art. Yeah. Yeah, he's a popular uh, painter in, in the UK. And uh, we helped him launch his first NFT series. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you can you can see how detailed the, the paintings are. Yeah. It, it almost seems realistic. Mm. Um, on my screen, it's it's in incredibly quality. Mm. Um, I don't know. That's very, 
Very cool. It's like uh, I love the whole you know explosion of the art ecosystem, right? That, yeah. that you know that um, people can and artist creators can get credit, uh, not only a pat on the back credit, but financial credit uh, for for their fantastic work or the digital work. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, you know this gives me great great joy and satisfaction to see that this yeah. is uh, opening up. What do you, in, in your opinion? Uh, what, maybe you can give us your view on what this uh, the, the the NFT um, um, uh, Pandora's box uh, kind of positive Pandora's box uh, means for the art world. What do you what do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think the internet basically destroyed um, the music industry, the video industry. The so there's a lot of industries um, destroyed by the arrival of the internet. And, um, and and the fact that you could very easily copy um, material that has, of course, copyright. And um, now with blockchain, we, we finally can reintroduce um, scarcity, uh, uniqueness um, to uh, the, the, the global population. So yeah, NFTs um, will basically, no, it will not fix the music industry, but I mean, it can, really boost uh, that world again mm. and, and fix the problem of, of copying uh, music and art and pictures and photography. There's, there's many industries disrupted by the, by, by the, in, the arrival of the internet. And, and now we finally have something that we can create a market for uh, the, the incredibly talented people that make these things and, and, and get paid uh, accordingly uh, instead of being robbed all the time. So yeah, I, I really, really think this is very interesting, these NFT space, but we haven't seen anything yet, of nothing yet. I mean, there's, I'm talking to projects that it, there's a creativity, it's incredible. People that want to do certain comics, People do want to do storylines in some shape or form. I can't say everything that that we're mm. working on, but it's very, very interesting. That's the art side of the world. An NFT can also be an invoice. So we are. I'm. I'm part of a, a group that is called Two Tokens, and we are working on standardizing. Um, for example, invoices that can be factored. So. Currently, um, basically only banks are providing factoring factoring or factoring companies are buying factoring services. So, so if you send out an invoice, you get paid after 30, 60, 90 days. Mm -hmm. And there are companies that finance your portfolio of invoices. Um, it's very labor intensive because you have to submit um, lists of all the invoices outstanding and uh, if there's a dispute, there's a whole diff di difficult process to, to handle those things. With NFTs, one invoice of a million euros to a client that says he doesn't dispute it can be very easily financed um, if there would be a very interesting and simple marketplace for that. And DeFi, decentralized finance, in the current financial world, many things are financed by one or a small group of people. So mm -hmm. your house is being financed by a bank. A big company is being financed by three and four strategic investors. With DeFi, we can build a world where if you need 1 million euro, uh, maybe you can ask 1 million people 1 euro. And that gives a completely different risk profile for these 100 million people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you just could finance an NFT for 30 days and you can help out in this way, um, a small, for example, my previous company had to invoice big amounts of money to big companies in the Netherlands, very strong, economically strong companies. These companies simply say uh, payment terms 70 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with these sort of easy financing of NFTs, factoring of 
invoices, you could just do only that one and, and, and bring it to a, a DeFi marketplace and mm -hmm. everybody in the world would say, oh, I'll, I'll finance that. Give me 3% interest on it uh, for 30 days. I can take the risk. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty pretty cool. Um, I have to say, yeah, it sounds uh, it's kind of more on the dry side of the of the NFT when we're coming from the uh, from the art yeah, market. The, the but very, it's, uh, it's highly happy. highly interesting because everyone every entrepreneur knows the the uh, you know the liquidity uh, problem, right? You have the you have the invoices and you have the contracts and everything, but the the payment is missing if you can bridge that. Yeah. And at the same time, it gives uh, it gives not only for uh, the receiving end, but for the giving end, like an, an easy access. I don't need uh, a lot of money to participate in in certain um, uh, let's say in, in investments or something that um, that is now being closed off to certain institutions or wealthy individuals. So um, yeah. yeah. Right. Let me let me tell you about one project that we're doing for. It's called Console Freight. Um, that is um, aiming in the the trade financing world. Fifteen percent of all the trade in the world never happens because the shipment isn't. They couldn't find somebody to finance the shipment. Let's say you want to sell bananas from Angola to Brazil, and the buyer and the seller is not economically strong enough, or the legal system is. A little bit unsecure. Who is going to finance that? So 15% of the world trade never happens because it cannot get financed. If you connect Internet of Things devices to the containers, so you know where the container is, you know the temperature of the container. If you combine trade finance with DeFi, location-based services and insurance products in one package on the blockchain, then you can do amazing things. You can finance those shipments. Mm. Everything is transparent. You know where they are. There's no dispute when the bananas arrive because you can prove that they were in the refrigerator and the refrigerator worked. Mm. Yeah. And if it didn't work, there was, I don't know, some sort of problem. We can prove that the temperature was too high and it is correct that the bananas were brown. Yeah? So the insurance so, actually has to has to pay. There is no no dispute yeah, about that's, that. It's, yeah, it's not the, disputable. So in areas where it's difficult to prove things, there's fraud, there's bad things happening. With blockchain, you can prove that it is the way that it, it happens. You know, there's truth in the system. Mm. Of course. Yeah. Of course. We talked about NFTs and from the art side of the community, actually, which is really actually needed because like you said in the beginning, like uh, internet destroyed everything. And uh, if it's not that small businesses, small artists, they're like deserves to expand their art and their creativity, of course, and NFTs are great. But um, let me ask you something else about uh, what, what is about other than the art community for example do you would it be really realistic to use nft in for example real estate something different than the art community what would be your thought yeah no nfts can be used everywhere uh, i think i gave already some examples in in mm -hmm. trade finance in invoicing right um of course we in the western world uh, a lot of things are very properly organized yeah, we uh, um, basically all the countries that Napoleon invaded has have, have a pretty good uh, uh, financial system or uh, land tiles uh, system. But in the rest of the world, that, that's lacking. I mean, even a, a modern country as, as the U.S. has challenges in, in, in defining who is able to vote and who's not. So... Um, there's there's a lot of lot of parts of the world where these these kinds of system blockchain systems uh, can really solve some 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 major problems um, in the in the real estate business. There's uh, a lot of a lot of examples. Um, there's a, a one organization called Fibre, Fibre.org, uh, focusing on on especially this. 
and um, they have built a huge network of uh, uh, real estate professionals that are very passionate about blockchain mm -hmm. and uh, they are working on on standards and um, uh, yeah so we're we're in contact with that company I'm, I'm myself I'm, I'm in uh, the board of a company called two tokens and we are also uh, supporting all kinds of NFTs and and uh, other use cases and trying to standardize that so uh, standardization initiative like I said for this invoice factoring is one of the projects that we support uh, there's a project on on standardizing energy uh, there's a very very brilliant guy that has developed he originally had the patent of the soft sim so the sim card but he made a soft sim uh, he was producing overlay sims and now he has a developed a chip that can be connected to a solar panel so you can prove that the energy is from a solar panel and that creates an nft every 30 seconds with the amount of energy that was produced in the solar panel that is extremely interesting yes. and uh, we need to talk uh, after the broadcast <laughs> about that there may yes. be a nice, uh, nice uh, application for that very okay. interesting very interesting and you can you you can see all kinds of markets trade markets uh, prediction markets uh, based on the data that chip generates very interesting so ecosystem. When, if the creativity is there there's no limit oh, absolutely play. it's not only it's artists it's no entrepreneurs with a lot course. of creativity yeah okay as we come to uh, the end of the 45 minutes almost uh, I want to give a uh, floor to some uh, some uh, some questions uh, by the audience that, that received us. So um, one is, uh, Red, where do you see the limitations of uh, NFTs? Uh, limitations, good question. <laughs> I think the whole ecosystem, of course, still needs some user friendliness. Um, so I think that is the biggest limit. Um, there's also some tech things to be built um now i demonstrated the wax ecosystem i think mm -hmm. in the future um uh, it, it's it's i think it's more about your wallet so in your wallet you have your uh, nfts and it doesn't matter on what blockchain they are uh, they can be on ethereum they can be on wax they can be on binance smart chain whatever if you like the art if you like the piece then you you just purchase it whatever blockchain it uh, is underneath it um and i think you maybe want to bridge nfts there's tech already for that launched mm -hmm. um, very unuser friendly is the first mm. uh, drafts of it where you can just ship your move your nft from ethereum to wax for example great great developments you have your wallet you choose where you want to keep your nft right he's in uh, the ipfs uh, data storage uh, but where the the signature of that file is kept in what blockchain that you don't care right as long as it works yeah that's that's true there is actually another question from the community which is they 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 want uh, to know that what is your favorite NFT project? Well, I love the R two guys. I really <laughs> passionate about uh, them and especially the Monsters of Rap. Let me show you these uh, quickly. Uh, so, not this one. Uh, I have to look at my inventory. So my monsters of rap. I like the rarities that this collection has. So um, so the common pictures are very simple. It's just a common picture. The uncommon pictures 
uh, move a little bit. I don't know if the audience can see it, but they move a little bit. They uh, looks like they zoom in and zoom out a little bit. The rare ones have this. I love this one, this effect. Mm -hmm. And the epic ones. Oh, I don't have. I'm not rich enough to have epic. <laughs> you see, I'm not rich enough to have legendary and epics. But I could go to the marketplace then. So yeah, that's the series I love the most. To uh, answer the question. Very right, cool. Uh, thanks a lot for sharing. We're also uh, exactly at the, the end of our forty-five uh, minutes. Um, I guess uh, leaves us to, to say thank you very much, Red, for uh, for joining, for taking the time, and yeah. uh, giving an insight to uh, to us and the viewers of the the NFT space and these uh, great projects. Um, yes, so. Uh, basically, uh, we will, um, yeah, I, we will be um, be in touch, right, and uh, yeah. talk okay. uh, after. And it was a true uh, pleasure. And maybe even sometime we uh, meet on the uh, beach kite surfing at some point. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I would very much, uh, very much like uh, like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's how we met. The audience very likely doesn't know, but we. No. Uh, we we met in South Africa kite surfing, yeah. True. And, and yes, I'm still I missed that in the in the beginning, you know. But yeah. uh, yes, that's basically where uh, where our mind is most of the time, probably on the yeah, on the yeah. water in the sun. I, it's yeah. really cool, and it's been a great helping you because it's a, like we said in the beginning, converging ecosystem. It's really interesting for everyone, and it's really important that we make a point and talk about it and let. People also understand what it's about and how can we link to blockchain. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot. Hey. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Are we uh, online still or we're still live? Huh? Yeah. That's uh, my.